Hi guys, we're going to now look at the software in Silicon Cloud and we're going to look at a demo of the ADI feature that is there on the M7 chip. As I've been talking to you all for so long, we have an M7 chip on the cloud that allows us um, to try out the features that we've been talking about and what we're going to show you is a demo of that. You can actually go to the software in Silicon Cloud today. It's live and running. SwissDev.Oracle.com is the site. If you go in there, you would see some details about the M7 chip. You can see some details about the ADI or application data integrity feature, see a demo of the ADI and so on. You can sign up to have access to the cloud and you don't have to look at my demo anymore. You can actually go try the same stuff. Of course, you can contact us and you can log into the cloud as well. As you log into the cloud, the first thing you would see is that you would see a dashboard where you see all of the VMs that have been created for you on the cloud. You can also create new VMs. Uh, you can create Spark VMs with the database pre-installed, or you can even create an M7 VM, which will give you access to a live M7 system. That's what I've done. As you can see here, we have about three M7 VMs for you. We have a Spark general purpose VM and a general purpose x86 VM. In this demo, what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to use the ADI feature or the application data integrity feature in the M7 chip. So that's one of the software and silicon features that we talked about. How we can use that to stop the heart bleed virus in OpenSSL. So as you can see here, we have one of the VMs actually running OpenSSL. We're going to try and use the OpenSSL from a good user, from a Spark VM here. We're going to have a hacker actually try to attack the OpenSSL server and see if we can hack in from one of the VMs here itself, right? So the demo is all self-contained. You, so you can see here on the dashboard, you have a frequently asked question, user's guide, soft and silicon presentation. You also have an ADI cookbook, which actually has lots of details about how to use the ADI in case you want to program to it and so on. Without much ado, let's actually look at the demo itself. Now to access this VM, because it is in a secure, secluded place, the easiest way to access this VM is to just click on this button. This starts a desktop. What I'm going to do is click on this and it'll bring up a desktop for me. As you can see, this is the entire Solaris desktop from the VM that is there. Here I'm actually having a demo that is already running just to save time. And what we have here in the blue window is the OpenSSL server. You can start it from here. You have a good user from the Spark VM that we showed, which is going to actually try and talk to the OpenSSL uh, server. And then we have a hacker who's trying to hack into the OpenSSL server. First, let's start the uh, OpenSSL server. This is the one that actually has the vulnerability. So we're just going to start it. And I just want to show you how the demo works. So if you authenticate from a good user, it is contacting the OpenSSL server for a heartbeat. And this typically would happen when you go to a website and the website actually is, has OpenSSL or not, right? So as soon as I clicked here a couple of times, you can see heartbeat requests coming in here. The vulnerability in OpenSSL allows a hacker to use the exact same heartbeat to hack into your OpenSSL server and pull out passwords and certificates and so on, right? So it's using the same heartbeat mechanism to pull out data. So what I did here was I clicked on the hacker and the hacker actually was able to get in and you can, you the OpenSSL thinks it was just another heartbeat, right? But the hacker was able to get your password and things like that from the OpenSSL server, right? This is how a vulnerable OpenSSL server would look like. What I'm going to do next is to keep the exact same code. I'm not changing any code in the server. I'm just now enabling the ADI feature on the M7 chip. So what this is going to do is it's going to look at what is happening in the system. And when a hacker tries to come in, it will block the hacker and it will tell you that it has blocked the hacker and it will tell you where in the code the vulnerability was. But before we look at the hacker, what I want to do is first let's clear the data that the hacker is, um, has so that when we run it the next time you would actually see whether a hacker is able to get in or not. But while we are waiting for the hacker's um, the data to be cleared, okay, there you go, It's uh, we've cleared the data. Let's first 
um, look at a good user authenticating with ADI enabled. So now we have an ADI enabled server. This is basically what's happening is the, the, the M7 chip has got the ADI enabled. And as I authenticate from the authentication server, you can see the heartbeat happening. So you can see as many times as I click here, you can see a heartbeat happening. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the hacker and see if we can make the hacker try and access uh, the OpenSSL server. Again, we are running the vulnerable OpenSSL server, but we are enabling ADI on the chip. Okay, so no code change, but we are basically enabling ADI on the chip. The moment I click on this, the hacker tries to access, the, what happens is it tells you clearly that you're trying to read beyond array bounds from a particular location, and it was able to stop the vulnerability right there. Right? This is the power of the M7 chip. The hacker doesn't get any data. You've not changed the code. All you did was enable the software and silicon ADI feature. Right, So for you to see this, this is actually running on a live real M7 server and we are running it um, you know, live for you. Right, And you can actually come in and try and do the same thing as well. Let me close this out and give you a few other things that we, you, know, you can do from here. Let's go back to the software and silicon cloud. And here, what I'd like you to do is to go to swissdev.oracle.com and then you can just click on sign up. And the sign up will actually allow you to fill in a form, a very simple form, and you'll get access to the cloud from here. So this is a very easy way for you to test out software in silicon. And what we encourage you to do is to log in today and try out the software in silicon uh, feature. Okay, so this is the software in silicon cloud and hope you enjoyed the demo.